So this is where one of my Makerspace essential items are, the yogurt container. Whether we use this to store water, we're doing paint color, or in this case, it helps us create a nice round circular shape. So all I'm gonna do is kind of create a trace pattern here around this. Now keep in mind for these pieces, they don't have to be perfect. And part of changing the shapes, and you'll see in future videos, is different shapes create different kind of movement patterns with our cardboard autonomous. So what I'm gonna do is I'm actually just gonna cut this out. I'm just gonna go across here, clear off some excess so we don't have all that to deal with. And I'm just gonna bring this down and then we'll just go across here. And if you have scissors, like I don't, maybe you don't use box cutters with your students. Scissors will work just fine. And I'm using thick, this is 10 millimeter foam thick that's really thick, which is ideal for this. It really gives a nice consistency and not wobbly. Um, but if you're like me and you can't always afford this because this isn't the cheapest, you go to the dollar store and you buy these regular foam papers, which are amazing for so many projects. What I have found to be effective is just hot gluing or using whatever glue you want, three of these together, and you get the same consistency. So this becomes quite helpful if you're looking to create a stronger um, cam and lever system. Just glue three of these bad boys together and you're in good shape. The other thing that you could use is old mouse mats. So this is an old raggedy one. You can tell it's a little dirty. It's still great Notre Dame, but it's the same thickness. And so I could use this as well. So you can be creative um, in your design. Sometimes a lot of schools are getting rid of computer labs um, as they go one to one. So you might be able to score a bunch of these um, in your school. Okay, so now back to here. I could use scissors and just cut this out, um, but for the sake of this video, I like my box cutters. And so all I'm gonna do is just kind of work my way around here. Making sure I don't cut my fingers, obviously. That's always important. And then once we have it, we should be in good shape here. I'm gonna have to go through just one more time. Get the bottom of that, because it is pretty thick. And there's our circle. So we're gonna put this first circle, and we're gonna put it right in the middle of this one as much as we can, right in the middle of this cardboard autonomous. This is what's going to create, can you guess the movement pattern? What would a, a circle in the middle do? Take some time here and kind of figure out, talk with your colleagues, some private reasoning time. So we'll see there. That's what it's gonna look like. Uh, so now let's go ahead and cut, cut one more. So once you've cut another circle and added it to the top, you put your skewer down so it's just lightly touching. See, it'll just naturally sit on there. And you're gonna to wanna to offset it a little bit so the bottom of the skewer isn't showing. I like to keep just a little bit. It kind of holds it as a guide so it won't run over and fall and lose location. And that's where the straw comes in ha handy. It holds that thing in place. And then now as we spin, hopefully you guessed it, it'll make things go round and round as you can see here in the video. Actually, you can't see there in the video. So in this particular case, it's going to make it go round and round in the video. So a circle in the middle, and then a circle in the middle up top, as you can see there, allows things to spin around sideways, just like you see there. So all I've done here, this was just a piece of foam paper here that I hot glued on. This is just the cardboard there. And then if you want to get creative, I just added a piece of cardboard to the end of the skewer and glued another skewer down. It just kind of creates a handy little lever. And then finally, here are the foam squares just to kind of hold everything in place if you need to.